Welcome to another special edition of In The Labs with Todd. If you remember last year, one of our free projects we gave away was this huge, gigantic Christmas tree maze. It was a lot of fun to make, but when I was done making this, I thought we could even make a better version of, not it, but a better version of a maze, a little more complicated. So in this project, I'm gonna show you how to make this little maze. It might look pretty simple, but actually it's double-sided. So once you beat one side, the ball will hook to the other side, and then you can solve the other side of the maze. Now, it's not that hard to make. The tricky part is how to lay out the maze. And um, well, let me show you how you do that. The first thing we're gonna to need to figure out is how to make a maze that's gonna work well with our tool path strategies that we have in our software. Well, to start out with, most of the mazes that you're gonna see online or that you're gonna get in a restaurant with a little packet of crayons to do is set up so that you can actually run the crayon through the maze or down the actual pathways. Well, for us, we don't need a pathway with walls. What we need is a center line to run our tool along. And in our case, we are gonna use what we call a ball nose end mill, which is a tool with a rounded end on it, a little bit bigger than the actual diameter or the roundness of the metal bearing that we're going to put inside of our maze. To start out with, we're going to need to create a traditional looking maze that will fit our ball bearing. So for starters, let's draw a circle. And our circle is going to be 0.25 of an inch. And that is actually the size of the end mill that we're going to use, the ball nose end that we're going to use to cut the channel with. That's perfect, let's close that down. Now the next thing we're gonna need is the actual dimension of the bearing that we have. So in our case, we have a four millimeter ball bearing. So let's go ahead and draw another circle, but in this case, we're gonna put in four. And if we put in times I in there, then that will convert four millimeters over to inches. And if I press equals, you'll see that we get 0.15748. So if we go ahead and create that inside of that other circle, we can close this down and you'll see that our bearing will travel hopefully nicely along any kind of channel that we cut using this quarter inch ball nose end mill. So now knowing that we can now set up a set of channels that are going to be a quarter inch wide. So to do that, we're going to use our grid setup here in our software and we can turn on our grid over here and you'll see that we have our grid all set up all of these dots are evenly spaced, but we don't know exactly what the spacing is. So let's go up to edit and go down to snap options. And here we can set up our grid. You'll see right now we have snap to grid turned on. And right now our grid spacing is a quarter inch, which is exactly what we need to do to create the channels for our maze. So let's click OK. Let's grab our rectangle tool. And we're going to go ahead and draw a square rectangle and it will automatically snap to the grid that we have set up. And then we can close that down. And you'll see now that little four millimeter ball bearing will actually travel along inside that channel without any problem at all. Let's put that back where it was. So now what we can do is we can just go ahead and copy this channel by holding down my control key and I can rotate it by pressing the zero key. And I can go ahead and quickly build a really basic maze here that uh, we can use as a demonstration. Now we're gonna make sure that we keep exactly a quarter inch between our channels here. And we can go ahead and shrink that up if we'd like to. Let's just grab this guy here, holding down my control key, I can copy it. And my control key, I can copy it again here. And then we'll put one more at the end. Just snap it in there. Now there we have it. So there's our channel and this is like a continuous uh, channel here, then you'll, we could roll our bearing along it and find our way to the end. But like I mentioned before, in order to be able to create a proper tool path with our ball nose end mill, we're actually going to need a center line. So we need to put a line in the center of these channels. And the easiest way to do that in our software is to go up to edit, go back down to your snap options, and we're going to half our grid spacing. So we're going to divide this by two and press equals on our keyboard and then click OK. And if we zoom in, you'll see now we have some extra grid markers halfway inside of our channel here. So if we go to our 
create a polyline tool, we can just go ahead and snap to those grid spots and draw ourselves a brand new center line through our channel there. Press escape to stop that. And we can delete out all of these rectangles. We don't need those anymore. And now we have a center line that we can run our ball nose end mill along to remo remove material to create a channel to run our ball along. And that's the way that we can go ahead and create our actual maze for this two-sided maze project. Now let's go ahead and have a look at the finished file that I'm gonna to use to cut my two-sided maze with. So this is the file that I'm gonna to use to cut my two-sided maze with. Now I've set this up to work on my CNC machine with the materials that I have on hand with the cutters that I plan to use. It's important that you take a look at all the different tool paths that I have and adjust them so they're safe and appropriate for your setup that you're gonna be using. Safety first. I'm just gonna click OK. Now you'll see right off the bat that there are two different sheets. There's one called acrylic and one called maze. Let's get the acrylic one out of the way. There are two rectangles on this acrylic sheet with rounded corners. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a piece of clear acrylic or plastic to create the top and the bottom of my maze. And that way it'll hold in the ball when you turn it upside down or turn it back over again. It's a pretty easy cut. It's not a big deal. It's just a simple profile cut to cut out those two squares that are exactly the right size to fit in the top of my maze. Now this is my maze and you'll see that it's a double sided job. And currently right now we're looking at the top of the job and we have some text on here. You're going to start at this point. You're going to be able to solve the maze and then drop through a hole that'll be right here. This is the way to the other side. And then you can flip the maze over to the other side. The ball will pop out again and then you can find your way back to the start or finish on the opposite side. You'll just need to remember what side you started on. So let's go back to the front again. Some really basic tooling here. And like I had mentioned, the idea is to run a small quarter inch ball nose end mill along this line here, the center line to create the channels where our ball is gonna go. So let's have a look at our tooling. And you'll see that there's quite a few tool paths again here, but I'm gonna go ahead and group these up so there aren't too many tool changes. Let's just have a look at these one at a time. So first of all, we have our dowel holes. That's so we can flip over our job and make sure everything is lined up on the other side. We have our pocket for our acrylic. And you can see that these blue lines here indicate where our tool is gonna to run so that it'll remove the material that needs to be removed. We have our maze, you'll see again, that there's the maze and it's gonna do several passes to get down to the bottom of that maze channel. We have the start holes and the finish hole. We have the handles that I've built into my design so it'd be easy to hold on to for little hands. The text, the hole that's gonna cut halfway through or just over halfway through my material so when I cut the same hole on the other side, it'll be all the way through. And then we have a simple cutout here to cut out the whole job. Now these interesting wire frames here are indicate the actual path that my tool is going to travel along. And you can see in wireframe how that's going to work. So let's preview our tool paths so that we can see exactly how they're going to look in the material that we're going to cut this project into. Let's preview all of our tool paths that are visible. There we have it, that's exactly what I want. We have our channel, we have our start and our drop to the other side. We've got our handles on our side. We've got a cutout pass all the way around the outside edge. And then of course the pocket here on the top so we can drop in our acrylic to make sure that ball doesn't fall out when we flip it over. Let's go ahead and flip to the other side and let's have a look at all the tool pads on this side as well, which are pretty much the same as the other side. Then we have a look at our full project still inside of our material, but there we have it, our interesting double-sided maze. Now let's go ahead and put that on the machine and get it cut and finish it and see how it works.
That was a lot of fun to make. It was really quick to cut. Um, I really enjoyed that. I think um, if I was going to make remake this again in the future, what I'd probably do is laminate two different color pieces of wood together. That way you can have a light side and a dark side. It'd kind of be a little bit easier to keep track of, of what side you started on. Also, I may have recessed the acrylic in a little bit deeper so that the edge of the wood actually would lay on a surface so you wouldn't scratch the acrylic. Um, but other than that, I, I think it turned out really well. Um, of course, you can customize this, you can make it your own, you can change up the text if you want to, or even remove the text. It's totally up to you. But the important thing is that if you make this this year and you pass it on to somebody and spread a little kindness this Christmas, that would be really quite fantastic. Anyway, I hope you're still having fun and uh, keep safe.